Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Casper West here, and today I have the affidavit. This is the official affidavit from Brian Koberger. Now, if you guys don't know, um, oh, actually, um, I just wanted to say this. Guys, please like, comment, and subscribe on my videos. I'm getting a lot of views, but I'm not getting a lot of subscribers. Uh, I'm not getting a lot, of, a lot of likes. So if you guys can, please like the videos, uh, try to make this content for you guys, um, comment on ways that I can improve anything that you like. And um, also, if you guys just want a quick background about me, um, you can also go to the About Me page on my YouTube channel, Casper West, and um, I could just give you a brief overview. So I was a criminology student as well as um, Brian Koberger here. However, um, I didn't actually <laughs> commit any crime. So um just want to say that i was also a criminology student i studied criminal science and i worked in one of the worst jails in the u.s so that's a little bit about me now let's get into this affidavit guys this is my first time reading it i wanted to make this reaction as genuine as possible um so this is going to be a shocking um, thing to me I just heard a few things but I haven't actually read the uh, affidavit now this is like about 19 pages long this is exhibit a this is a sta statement from Brett Payne all right so below is the information provided by Brett Payne who is duly appointed qualified and acting peace officer within the county of Lata state of Ohio that's basically where um, the murders happen okay Brett Payne is employed but okay so he's employed by Moscow Police Department so this, this whole paragraph is just giving credibility to Brett Payne as to why his statement should be uh, taken seriously. All right. On November 13, 2022, at approximately 4 p.m., Moscow Police Department, Sergeant Blake and I responded to 1122. This is the house that um, the murders happened at. Here after the King Road resident to assist... Uh, with scene security and processing of a crime scene associated with four homicides. Upon our arrival, ISP forensic team was on scene and was preparing to begin processing the scene. Okay, so the forensic team is on there. They're looking to uh, pick up things such as like DNA. They're looking to uh, process the scene, find any type of uh, murder weapon, um, testing the blood and things like that, right? So MPD officer Smith, one of the initial responding officers to the incident advised he would walk me through the scene, okay? Officer Smith. And guys, I'm a, um, probably not going to read the whole thing. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are also reading too as you guys are watching this video, but um, I'm going to just pretty much sum it up. I know I'm going to read kind of quick and um, probably skip a couple paragraphs, but um, I'm going to just try to get to the juicy information as quick as possible, okay? So, Officer Smith directed me down the hallway at the west bedroom on the second floor, which I later learned, though. Through Xana's driver's license and other personal belongings found in the room was Xana Carnoodles. Hereafter, Carnoodles' room. Just before this room, there was a bathroom door on the south wall of the hallway. As I approached the room, I could see a body. Later identified as Carnoodles laying on the floor. So Carnoodle was in the... Just before this room, there was a bathroom door. Okay. So he saw the body in the bath. Oh, no. This, the, okay, so the body was in the bedroom. It was found in the bedroom. That was Kernoodle, who was laying on the floor. She was deceased with wounds, which appeared to have been caused by an edge weapon. Edge weapon, guys. Also in the room was a male later identified as Ethan Chapman. Ethan Chapman was also deceased with wounds, later determined by the autopsy of... Autopsy provided by Spokane. Okay, all okay. right. All this stuff been redacted, so um, this was probably some information that was supposed to be there. Um, okay, I then followed OFC Smith upstairs to the third floor of the residence. The third floor consisted of two bedrooms. All right, so pretty much, if I could paint this picture for you guys, the second floor was Xanner, Canoodle, and Ethan Chapman. Bodies were found in the bedroom on the second floor. Now, he's going up to the third floor of the residence. Now, the third floor consisted of two bedrooms and one bathroom. The bedroom was on the west side of the floor. And that was later determined to be Kaylee Gun Gunclave's room. Now, this is Kaylee's room. Supposedly, 
according to the coroner, I know you guys were getting in the comments saying, well, only the dad said that um, the coroner isn't truthful. The coroner said Kaylee had the worst injuries. Now, we know Kaylee also had a stalker as well from the vape shop manager. He also said that he heard Madison say our friend was being stalked for weeks. Kaylee's father said that they see a connection between Brian Koberger and Kaylee. So there's some type of reason why Kaylee have the uh, most horrific injuries out of all four victims. So that was Kaylee's room on the third floor, guys. Uh, I later learned from review of Officer Nunes' body camera, there was a dog in the room where Moscow police officers initially responded. The dog belonged to Conclaves and her ex-boyfriend, Jack Ducor. Okay, so I found out from my interview with Jack that he and Gaclava shared the dog. So that was her ex-boyfriend. He wasn't home at the time, but their dog was home at that time. OFC Smith then pointed out a small bathroom on the east side of the third floor. The bathroom shared the wall with Madison Mogan. Hereafter, Mogan bedroom, which was situated. Okay, so Madison and Kaylee was on the third floor. Ethan and Xana was on the second floor. And I'm guessing the other two roommates who survived was on the first floor. All right. As I entered this bedroom, I could see two females in the single bed in the room. Both Conglavis and Morgan were deceased with visible stab wounds. This is why I was curious as to how the two roommates said that one of, that one of the, that the victims were passed out because... The cops, there were visible stab wounds on each victim. It was blood. There was things that you can tell someone was not passed out. You could tell that someone was deceased upon looking on them, okay? So, I also later noticed that appeared to be a tan leather knife sheath laying on the bed next to Morgan's right side. So, it was a tan leather knife laying on the bed next to Morgan's right side. It was later processed and had Kabar, USMC, and the United States Marine Corps. Now, USMC is the U.S. Marine Corps, guys. Eagle Globe and Anchor insignia stamped on the outside of it. That's big, all right? The Idaho State Lab later located a single source of male DNA left on the button snap of the knife. Oh, my gosh, guys. Oh, my gosh. So, this whole time, right, remember we had... Chief Fari of the Moscow Police Department. We had um, the detectives. They said that there was no murder weapon, right? Now, they didn't want to release that information to the public, possibly because they didn't want to scare off Brian Koberger, but there was DNA this entire time on a USMC knife, which had his fingerprints and had his DNA left on the knife, okay? As part of the investigation, numerous interviews were conducted by Moscow police, FBI agents. So that's when they got the FBI agents involved and things like that. Now, at the time of the, at the, time of the homicide and the roommates of the victims, bedroom was located on the east side of the first floor of the King Road residence. Now, based on numerous interviews, they have learned the following. Okay, this is what they learned. On the evening of November 12th, Chapin and Carnoodle are seen by BF at the Sigma Chai House on the University of Idaho campus. On November 12th, 9 p.m. to 145, also estimated that approximately one, at 145, Chapin and Carnoodle returned to King Road residence. BF also stated that Chapin did not live in the King Road residence, but was a guest of Carnoodle. Okay, so Ethan Chapin did not live there. So it seems like it was a sorority house of some sort, mostly mainly girls who lived there. And Ethan was just over because his girlfriend lived there. So, Gonclavis and Morgan were at a local bar. Now, we've seen the video where um, the body cam where it says uh, Adam told us I told Adam everything, right? So they was leaving that bar. They also went to get some food at a grub truck, right? So this was the grub truck. And that live stream also showed them getting the food and having a slight argument with um, a gentleman over there. So 
the Grub Truck had a streaming platform, Twitch, which is available for public viewing on their website. The video was captured by law enforcement, and a private party reported that they provided a ride to Conglavis and Morgan at approximately 156. Now, what was this uh, private party? They never said. They actually redacted that. So, um, Okay, guys, part two is the next video. Now, I'll possibly have a part three, so continue clicking on to the next video um, so that you can finish. Um, this is possibly going to be a four-part analysis, so um, definitely stay in tune.